Hi everyone. So today, let's discuss about the norma occipitalis. That is the back view of the skull. When we observe the skull from back, what all features we would be able to see? So again, starting from top to bottom. First of all, you can see these two parietal bones. Some part of the sagittal suture, the parietal emissary foramen, and the obliquion between them. Next, you would be able to see this. lambdoid suture and the point of meeting of the sagittal suture with the lambdoid suture is a point which corresponds to the posterior fontanelle or the lambda this is the occipital bone basically the squamous part of the occipital bone next a midline protuberance can be seen a midline prominence can be seen this is the external occipital protuberance and this external occipital protuberance marks the junction of the head and neck okay now the most prominent point on this external occipital protuberance is called as inion and just above inion over here you will find a point which is called as the occipital point and this point is farthest from the glabella glabella is basically this is glabella glabella is a midline elevation joining the two superciliary arches so anterior posteriorly the glabella is farthest from the inion see anterior posteriorly glabella is farthest from the inion okay sorry not from inion from the occipital point glabella is farthest from the occipital point anterior posteriorly next over here you would be able to see two lines so these are basically the superior knuckle lines while over here inferiorly also you can see two lines on either side these are the inferior knuckle lines okay next over here you can see foramen over here also so these foramen are basically the mastoid foramen these mastoid foramen basically open into the sigmoid sulcus and the mastoid foramen transmits the emissary vein and the meningeal branch of the occipital artery so basically the uh, the meningeal branch of the occipital artery and the emissary vein pass through this mastoid foramen okay next you can see the first of all this is the mastoid process which is the part of the temporal bone the suture between the occipital bone and the mastoid bone is called as the occipital mastoid suture while this suture between the parietal bone and the mastoid bone is the parieto mastoid suture okay now over here you can see a point this is a point between the lambdoid suture the parieto mastoid suture and the occipital mastoid suture this point is known as asterion okay so this point is the asterion and basically this point corresponds to the region of the mastoid fontanelle in case of infants and it, uh, and this mastoid fontanelle closes at the age of 12 months basically asterion is a point where the mastoid fontanelle is present in case of infants okay so uh, these were all the features from the norma occipitalis and one more thing just above the superior knuckle lines sometimes 1 cm above are present highest knuckle lines okay so these highest knuckle lines are not present always but occasionally these may be found lying 1 cm above the superior knuckle lines okay so once again just to summarize let's uh, study the same features from the book now see as i have already mentioned some part of the sagittal suture can be observed the two parietal bones the parietal mystery foramen with obliquion between them lambda or the posterior fontanelle the point of meeting of the sagittal suture with the lambdoid suture then again you can see lambdoid suture 
the occipital bone this is external occipital protuberance the superior knuckle lines inferior knuckle lines mastoid foramen right this one the occipital mastoid suture this is the parieto mastoid suture and this is esterion see on having a closer view you can very well see that it is a point between three sutures the lambdoid suture the parieto mastoid and the occipito mastoid and this is the mastoid process which is the part of the temporal bone so this was all about the norma occipitalis thank you